leave your main standing? Fourth? Second? Whatever. Uh, please repeat Second Chronicles 7 14. And my people who are called by my name, among themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their evil ways, and I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Pledge to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a land to my feet, and I lie unto my mat, and I will hide this word to my heart, and that I might not sin against God. I pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. shaking fingers and, and uh, accusations. Um, none of it's helping anything. We just got to take this one day at a time. You know, um, I know where I work, there's a lot of uh, turmoil with the masks and things like that. You know, just just respect one another's decision if they do want to wear them, if they don't want to wear them. You know, you see a lot of it, I have, like when I go to stores and People like myself that really don't want to wear them, you get people, you know, look at you strange or, you know, like uh, you should be wearing them or, you know, for whatever reason, you know, just be conscious and just know that, you know, it's their choice to make if they want to do it or, or you know, if you don't want to do it, just, just remember everybody's got their own, uh, their own way of thinking about those kind of things. So just be mindful, just be respectful. And just, you know, let them, just support them, just pray for them, and uh, just try to do the right thing. Um, importantly, you know, uh, in the world we live in today, there's just so much fighting, so much things that's going on. Um, real quick, last week we had an incident at work, we had to get the sheriff involved. And uh, they were there for a few hours, but I got a chance to speak to this uh, deputy sheriff. And uh, I was talking to her about... Uh, our church and uh, I told her that every week you know we pray for all of our first responders our sheriff police stuff and she said you know that really means a lot to hear that from somebody she said it's one thing to hear people say it she said but to know that an active member of like your church is is really praying for us she said that really means a lot to us when we're out there she said because when we leave our house she says but especially in today's world we don't ever know if we're going to make it home. And she said, and that really means a lot. That really helps me out personally to know that I've got people like you out there praying for our safety, praying that we go home to our loved ones every day. And that just really hit home to me, you know. I have a job, which, you know, most of us do, and but we don't have a job like what they have. You know, they're, they're literally putting their lives on the line every single day for each and every one of us to make sure that we're safe. So, you know, just just keep praying for them. You know, pray for their safety, pray for their strength. You know, pay, uh, pray that uh, all this comes to an end soon and we can get back to normalcy. But until uh, God decides that day is, is coming, um, then we just gotta do what we have to be to do, be diligent, keep in prayer, stay humble, and just keep putting our next foot forward. Brother Glenn, would you lead us in a prayer for our country, pray for our churches, pray for Israel, and just pray for safety everywhere in our world. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning to worship you in the freedom that we have. Father, we pray that you would be on the minds and hearts of every one of our leaders, Lord, that you would open their hearts to your word, and that they would make the decisions that they make daily um, while leading us. 
make those decisions from your word and not from a worldly point of view. Father, we pray for all the first responders, not only for their physical safety, Lord, that you protect them and, and give them home safely at night, but Lord, we pray that you would protect their hearts as well as they are exposed to so much evil and, and so much hardship. Lord, that we just protect, pray that we protect their heart, that they don't become hardened and they, they can maintain the compassion um, that, that you have given them in their hearts. Father, we pray for the leaders, not only from the top down, um, but clear into our community, into our, our churches, Father, that all leaders would put you first and put your ways and your word um, in their hearts and minds before decisions are made. In Jesus' name we pray. As Brother Brent was, was speaking, you know, the, the whole mask thing is a, just one more controversy in our society to try to separate us. And regardless of which way you fall on that decision, we need to make sure that it does not separate us. Amen? Amen. Um, it is our view at, at Shine Light that uh, if you wear a mask and no one will look down on you, if you don't wear a mask, we will expect that you have your reasons and we won't look down on you. Um, I, I can tell you, I know most of you probably don't realize this, but I ran a microbiology lab for 10 years, meaning I dealt with viruses and, and bacteria for 10 years in a hospital. And, and I, I know that uh, one of the biggest problems of the masks so far has been the lack of real knowledge that's been given out to the folks. Um, and quite frankly, there's so many lies out there that no one knows what to believe. Um, I can tell you for sure that these little flimsy masks that we're, we're wearing do help a little bit. If you are sick and you cough or you sneeze, it will help contain that cough or that sneeze. We would ask you if you're sick to stay home. If you are truly worried or if you have underlying conditions where you're afraid of getting this virus, then you really should be wearing a different mask. There's masks called N95 masks. You can even get them at Lowe's. They say N95 right on. They will help you from keeping, keep, help keep you from getting the virus. It's not foolproof, but it'll help you. Um, these little masks, these little surgical masks, they are not designed for that. They might catch a few particles here or there, but if somebody sneezes in your face, it's going to get past that mask. So, regardless of where you fall on that, um, let's love one another. Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right. We are going to continue today uh, in our journey through the, the Ten Commandments. We are on number nine. It reads like this from Exodus chapter 20 and verse 16. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And when you mention this command, there's always going to be a few that want to limit the scope of that command. What comes to mind when you hear the word witness? The court, right? But we know when we're talking about uh, bearing false, false witness, we're not just talking about the courtroom, amen? Do you need to be in a courtroom to be a faultless false witness? The answer is a resounding no. We think of a court of law when we hear this word witness, but we certainly bear witness about people and about things outside of the court of law on a daily basis, amen? Hopefully, we do as the apostles taught us, and we bear witness for Christ daily. Amen? We bear witness to the gospel that Jesus gave us. We bear witness to the goodness and the grace of God. Amen? And of course, we need to keep Brother Barry's tradition alive, so say it with me. That's a fact, Jen. <laughs> right on. So again, no, we don't have to be in a court of law if we're going to bear witness about someone. We also know that God is not a fan of lying, period. Amen? 
whether that lie is about your neighbor or not. Lying is mentioned so many times in the Bible. It's mentioned so many times in Proverbs. Uh, that there's no hope that we would cover them all, but I'm going to go over a couple with you. And of course, the big one, the one we all are probably familiar with, Proverbs chapter 6, starting in verse 16. It says, There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to Him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who bears, breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. So here we got a, one of the top seven from God, and four of them involve lying. Number one, a lying tongue. That's pretty straightforward. Number two, a heart that devises wicked plans. How many hearts that devise wicked plans have you known that didn't include deceit and lies in those plans? Number three, a false witness who breathes out lies. Number four, one who sows discord among brothers. Now I'm sure it's technically possible to sow discord without deceit, but how many times have you seen that? It always, discord always seems to involve some sort of lying, some sort of stretching of the truth, with the bending of it. And before you know it, you're bearing false witness against the brother. Proverbs 12, 22 says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are His delight. Proverbs 25, 18 says, A man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a war club or a sword or a sharp arrow. And what does that tell you? When you bear with false witness against your brother, you're causing destruction. You're causing damage. Proverbs 13, 5, The righteous hates falsehood, but the wicked brings shame and disgrace. So God comes at us at another angle here, the angle of a believer. Who are the righteous? And what does righteousness mean? That means being right with God, amen? If you are right with God, then you hate falsehood. You hate lies. God tells us through the Apostle Paul this. He says, do not lie to one another. Seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Colossians 3, 9 and 10. He also says, therefore, having put away falsehood, let each of you speak the truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Ephesians 4, 25. If we're members of one another, and you lie to a brother and sister, you're lying to yourself. Amen. What did Jesus say was the greatest commandments? Matthew 22, starting in verse 36, he says, it says, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all of the law and the prophets. When we're talking about the Ten Commandments, it's just the same. Every one of these Ten Commandments demonstrates love for God, love for your neighbor. And you're certainly not loving your neighbor if you're bearing false witness against him. Amen? And we certainly are not showing love for God if we're defying His commandments. 
Can I get another amen? amen. Finding ourselves on the wrong end of lawlessness is not where we want, we want to be. There are multiple places in Scripture where he gives us a top seven or a top ten sins that we should not let ourselves to be a part of. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 says, Now we know the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and the disobedient, for the ungodly and the sinners, for the unholy and the profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, for men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. We should make sure that we do not find ourselves in the practice of any of these things. Amen? Now most would say, I would never bear false witness against the neighbor. But as I examined myself over the last few weeks, and I watch what goes on around the world, we find that it's much easier to bear false witness against your neighbor than what we think it is. Amen? How many times have you repeated something or shared a Facebook post or something on Twitter without going out and make sure it's, making sure it's true before you do it. Your intent might not be to bear false witness, but it's very easy to do it. God convicted me of, of this a couple of years ago, but I have to say, I've still caught myself doing it. Dennis Prager said this on the subject. A society cannot survive with contempt for the truth. Without the hope of justice, there can be no civilization. And if we look back in history, we can watch this over and over. Amen? Societies who shun truth and shun justice destroy themselves. I would ask you all to pray very fervently for our country every day. You know, the, the United States, despite all of its flaws, has been the beacon of hope and justice and truth in this world for quite some time. Amen. And she is under attack like she has never been under attack before. Not only from without, but from within. If something doesn't change soon, we may very well find ourselves on the way to doing the evil that other nations have done. We're all familiar with Adolf Hitler and his Nazi Germany. Amen? Millions of people died because millions of average citizens were duped into believing a lie. Amen? They were duped into believing that somehow the so-called Aryan race was somehow better than the Jews, the Gypsies, and anyone else who wasn't like them. And as a result, those average citizens murdered millions of people. People were tortured in the most hideous ways imaginable. What a lot of people are not quite as familiar with is communism. And I would say communism slash socialism slash Marxism. They like to distinguish themselves from one another, but they're all the same thing. If you look it up, there's quite a few people uh, who have wrote books on this subject. Most, most authors that I found on the subject of communism slash socialism estimate the death toll caused by this type of government. And of course, most of it would be the Soviet Union and China, or the majority of it. They estimate the death toll for the 20th century 
to be around 100 to 110 million people murdered because of these governments. These governments all based on a lie. Now we know these authors are scouring through as much records they can find to come up with these, these, uh, these estimates. But we know liars don't like records, amen? Most would estimate that that number is probably about half of what it should be. So hundreds of millions of people have died. And they died because of a lie. That because you don't believe what I believe, how I believe it, then you need to die. You need to be eliminated. You are not worthy to live because you don't think as I think. They use what we call these days groupthink methods. Methods to dupe their followers into believing the lies and manipulate average folks into doing all sorts of evil things. You know, with these type of governments, we know that the top people who are running this are very evil people. But those few very evil people could not do what they want to do or have done without millions of average citizens believing those lies. They could not have done it themselves. We see this plague beginning to happen right here in the streets of America. Amen? The Communist Party seemed to have disappeared in the early 1900s here, but they didn't disappear. They're still here. They're alive and well. They just changed their name. The Communist Party is working very diligently to destroy the last hope of truth and justice in this world, and that's America. If you believe in the biblical view of marriage and the family unit, if you stand up for the rights of the unborn, if you dare to claim Jesus to be the only way to the Father, if you stand on the word of God in all things, you will be demonized. You will be ridiculed. You will be shamed by these people. And mark my words, many think this could never happen in America, but just like these other countries did, if people believe the lies, if they are duped into following these folks, they will seize control. And people like you and me will be lined up and shot. Now, as soon as you say that, you're a conspiracy theorist. But we see the truth disappearing in our society every day. Lies are so pervasive that we can no longer believe anything that we hear in the public square. If you look at our president, whether you like him or not, whether you agree with his policies or not, you cannot deny the injustice that's being perpetrated on this man daily. If you search the TV shows, the broadcasts, the podcasts, the YouTubes, the Facebook, the Twitter, all of this other media, I guarantee you, you will find hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people either bearing false witness against him or perpetuating false witness that someone else bears against him. What happens if he really does do something bad? We're not going to believe it because all we get is lies. It's like the boy who cried wolf. There are so many lies and so many people bearing false witness about our, our, our government officials and everyone else that how do we believe anything? Again, a society cannot survive with a contempt for the truth. Without a hope of justice, there cannot be civilization. Amen?
racism. That is one of the hottest topics we have right now. It's also one of the most pervasive lies that we see in our country today. And don't get me wrong, there is absolutely real racism in this world. I don't know of any of us who haven't come in contact with a racist person in our life at some point. And racism is definitely not limited to white people. But what we see today is lying and manipulating of the truth to serve an agenda of a few people in powerful places. As long as those lies and that manipulation of the truth continues, as long as people are manipulated into serving political agendas, the real problem of racism that does exist will never be solved. Because when you're trying to solve the wrong problem, the real one is not going to be solved. And quite frankly, those who are doing the manipulating and bending and lying don't want that problem to be solved. Because if they solve the problem, they lose one of their greatest tools for manipulating people. This COVID-19 pandemic is another great example that we're dealing with today on a daily basis. There are so many lies out there that the average person has no idea what to believe. We don't. As usual, this tragedy is being exploited to serve political purposes. And we have people on both sides of the aisle bearing false witness against one another, and who do you believe? The deaths and the sickness of thousands of innocent people are being used to lie and manipulate the general public for political purposes. But not all lies have evil intent, amen? How many times have we seen people who, who lie for a good cause? They have this great intent in their heart, but they're trying to use lies to get what they need. I don't know if all of you remember, but back in the 80s, there were a couple big champions who came out that championed the cause of the homeless. And they were doing awesome things that had never been done before. Then all of a sudden one of them got caught lying about his numbers, making up false numbers, which is another thing we see all the time today. And all of a sudden his cause took a big hit because he was lying. Was his intent good? He was trying to do good, but he didn't do it the right way, amen? A few years back, we saw one of the uh, cancer societies that were fighting for women's breast cancer. They were doing great things for that cause and raising a lot of money. And one of the leaders of that cause got caught fudging numbers again, making people believe that there were far more cases of cancer than there were. Was her heart in the right place? She was just trying to scare people into getting mammograms because she wanted people to be healthy. She wanted people not to die from this cancer. But because she lied, because she got caught, her cause took a big hit. Again, society cannot survive without truth. And it's up to each and every one of us to stand up for the truth, amen? Whether it's one person to another, or if it's a global conspiracy, we stand for the truth. It starts with us. We make decisions every day. We can follow the truth or not, amen? We must train ourselves to resist falsehood in our own lives and set the example for others. 
We don't bend the truth. We don't manipulate the truth. We don't break the truth if we're going to follow God. Leviticus 19.11 says you shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. We need to pray that the truth is in our hearts all the time. We need to pray for our church, for our country, for all of God's creation, that the truth is going to be our native language. We need to pray that we not allow the devil to lead us in his ways. When speaking to the Israelites, Jesus said this, John 8, 4, 4, he says, you are the father of the, you are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning. He does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character. But he is a liar and the father of lies. Let us follow truth in all things. Let us follow our father, the father of truth. Amen? Let us follow, follow the father of truth and justice and mercy and grace. God makes it very clear that those who follow the father of lies will pay a heavy price. In Romans 1.18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. And again in Revelation 21, 8, he says, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. We stand for God and we stand for truth. But we also know that if we stand for truth, the world is going to come back at us. Amen. If you stand for truth, you will be hated by the world. The world will fear, will bear false witness against you, just as they did our Lord. But stand true, holding fast to the Word of God. When He gave us the armor of God, I want you to note the first piece of armor, armor He told us to strap on. In Ephesians 6.13, He says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. There's a reason that's first. So brothers and sisters, fasten on that belt of truth. Grab a hold of it and do not let it go. Whether it's in the court of law or the court of public opinion or just gossiping, don't let bearing false witness of your neighbor be a part of who you are. Lying is not just a speech problem, amen? It's a heart problem. In our hearts, may we all love our neighbor as ourselves, amen? All right, you move back your heads with me. If you do not yet know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't have that personal relationship if you have not given your heart to Him, come 
completely, then there is no better time than right now to do it. Because he has told us we do not know if we're going to be here tomorrow. Death will come to us like a thief in the night. John 14, 23 says, Jesus answered, Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and he will come to him, and we will make our home with him. If that's your desire today, if you have never truly given your heart to God 100%, that today is the day. And I'm going to lead you in prayer in just a moment. This is not some magical incantation. It is a prayer. It is your declaration to God that you are starting your journey following Him in obedience to Him. That you are giving your heart to Him. If that's you, pray with me now. Heavenly Father, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I know that I need you in my life. And I repent of my sins and place my faith in you. I ask that you replace my will with your will. And I will follow you for eternity. With every head still bowed, every eye still closed. If you said that prayer today, if you have given your heart to Jesus Christ this day, I want you to just raise your head, raise your hand, because I have three questions for you. conviction today as I did. This altar will be open for you too. We need to pay attention of our hearts, not only our words, to make sure that we are not bearing false witness against our neighbors or anyone. And if you found yourself convicted as I did, there is repentance, and there is being washed clean by the word and by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah. All right, you may raise your head. Brother Barry, you need to see this. Our invitation.